blessed face we shall see A home in heaven for all eternity Kneeling before your throne Forever worshiping you Beyond 
the stained glass window. The world has we show them Christ. We gotta do better, Altos. Gates of Pearl. Keep him watching both day and night. I'm getting ready to leave this. All right, now you Altos gotta quit being scaredy cats and sing those repeat lines now. Verse two, here we go. Trusting in the riches of his saving grace. In each earthly trial I his love can trace. I shall find a place again. I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready to leave. Help me now. I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl. Keep it. To prepare a mansion, Jesus said, that's right. If it were not true, I would have told you so. Just a little while to linger here below. I'm getting ready to leave this. Sing, I'm getting ready to leave this world of sorrow. Brother Tyler, skip all the way back to verse 1. We're just now getting it. Let's do that verse again. Laying up my treasures, laying up my treasures in that home. Sing it now. In the Savior's love, doing what I can for heaven's glory. Sing. I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to leave this. Let's sing that chorus one more time. I'm getting ready. Brother Nick, come on up here if you would. I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl. Keep me for watching both day and night. I'm getting ready to leave this. Mm, how many of you know it's a sinful world? Won't it be good to get out of this crazy world? Brother Nick, you come lead us in prayer if you would. Just place off. Heavenly Father, we yes. sure do love you tonight. Yes. Thank you for reaching down in this old muck and mire and pulling us out of that old, old sinful world, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for saving us. Yes. Sometimes we forget about it and we, get, we kind of get over it. But God, let us remember, like Peter said, to stir you up by putting you in way of remembrance, Lord. Let us remember tonight what a sinful mess we were and it, it'd fire us up just to be in the house of God. We get so used to it. <clears throat> God, let it be fresh and anew to us tonight. Give us a holy touch from heaven. Let it not just be another service where we check the box and we let it go by and uh, <clears throat> we leave no different than we came. I pray that you'd touch our heart tonight that we wouldn't just uh, <clears throat> leave and uh, start out our week like every other week, Lord, that you'd touch our hearts and our lives tonight. I pray if there's a lost person here, God, you'd speak to their heart. And God, just work in our hearts and lives tonight. God, <clears throat> touch the preaching, touch the singing, God. Have your will and way in every part of the service, Lord. God, we need a touch to go out into this world tomorrow morning. We need a touch from heaven. And God, I pray we'd get one so we can go, go and uplift Jesus Christ to them so they can see, see you high and lifted up, God. And it might change somebody's eternity. It might change somebody's life just by seeing somebody live a different life. That They can see that uh, it doesn't have to be the way of this world, that Jesus does make a difference. Jesus does really change lives. And I pray that you'd uh, touch and help this service tonight. In Jesus' name, amen sing another one out of the red book living by faith now i want you to 
focus on these words. Thanks for praying for us. We had a great trip, great vacation, attended a church there Wednesday night that our uh, we support uh, the ministry bus them in. We went to that church on Wednesday night, and then we ended up going to a youth conference on Friday night and uh, had a good time there. And I didn't speak in either one, just sat there and rejoiced and listened and, and feeling good. And so to be honest with you, I got bad, a little bit of bad news. I'm not preaching tonight. Thank y'all. Thank you, Brother Matt. Uh, he's the one said, oh, because he's preaching tonight. The rest of them are like, we don't care. That ain't bad news. Well, thank you very much. But uh, Brother Matt's going to preach tonight. Wasn't sure if I was going to be back or not. So I'm looking forward to just sitting back again tonight and uh, being, being a staff man. I'm making announcements, leading the singing. Brother Matt's bringing the message tonight. Looking forward to it. So let's think about these words. I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all of my worry is vain. Let's sing it like we mean it. From your heart now. I care not today. I care not today what tomorrow may bring in shadow or sunshine or rain. Sing it. The Lord I know will everything and all of my worry is mine. So living my faith in Jesus above. Come on now. Trust in can sing tenor, you sing that backup line as well. Let's push it out. Verse 2, though tempests may blow, though tempests may blow and the storm clouds arise, obscuring the brightness of light, I'm never alarmed, alarmed at the overcast skies, the master looks on. Sing it out now. Ladies only. All right, ladies, help me. Here we go. I know. No matter. Yep. All right, let's go ahead and sing that fourth verse. Fourth verse, fellas. Here we go. Our Lord will return to this. Our trust. Yeah, sing it, man. The masters. Yeah. Beyond that blessed head. Everybody now. Living by faith in Jesus. Trusting God in his great love. In Jesus above, trusting, confiding in his great love. Sing it out now. From all harm safe, in his sheltering arm, I'm living by faith. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Well, good singing tonight. You can be seated. Let me give you a couple of 
Uh, praise reports, as I said, we had a good vacation, about 1,200 miles driven. And praise the Lord, no tickets, no accidents. Thank God for all of that. And I am so glad when we got to about Virginia and started seeing trees, I was thanking God. Uh, only about two lanes per interstate side and trees everywhere instead of 17 lanes. In the big city, the lanes just disappear with no warning. I don't know if y'all know that. You'll be in one, they'll be in one, they'll be in one, and then yours disappears. And they take them over, and uh, it's a blessing, praise God. So I'm glad to be back here driving around in Marion. I know we got crazy people, but at least there's just two lanes, and you know which one you're supposed to be on. And uh, we had a good time, praise the Lord for that. And uh, I want to praise the Lord for last Sunday morning. I wasn't here this morning, but we had a great day last Sunday. I hope you don't forget that. Uh, just seemed like a regular service till the invitation. Down at the invitation, God settled in here, and we did invitation for about 40 minutes after it was all said and done, and God did a real work in some people's lives. So we praise the Lord for that. And also, Miss Patty's dad had surgery this week and went, went well, as far as I know. The last I've heard, he's still doing okay. And uh, pray for him, continue to recover. And then, good to have Brother John Minish back with us. He'd been pretty bad sick and had some ongoing battles for many years, to be honest with you. And today, in the last couple of days, got some real victory. So we want to praise the Lord for that and thank the Lord for touching him. We want to continue to pray for Miss Kay Fresh Hour's parents on the same day the other day. Uh, they had to put her mom, who has dementia, in uh, Rose Hill, I believe it is up here, and then put her dad in autumn care for rehab for the surgery and stuff he had. had put them both in on the same day. So pretty tough day for their family. Be praying for them if you would. Chris Yarborough is still uh, recovering, but hopefully going to get to come home in the next day or so. Brother Matt mentioned this morning Miss Pauletta's been in the hospital and still struggling, so we want to be praying for her that the infection would get out of her body. And Miss Katie Tony is here tonight. But she's having severe problems with her back, I believe it is, and uh, getting ready to go see a specialist. P pray that she does not have to have surgery, that the Lord would touch her and uh, they would be able to help her in some other way. And then continue to pray, if you would, for Brother Brian Wilson as he's preaching off, I guess, again tonight at another church. And so pray for him, if you would. Let's go ahead and have the ushers come. Go ahead and have the ushers make your way. All that uh, driving in traffic, I was reading something today that got me tickled. It said, a man, a man told this story. He said that he was in line at McDonald's and said the lady behind him got upset that he was taking too long. She started blowing the horn, and it got worse. She started hollering. She started making hand gestures in his directions and uh, all those things. And so he, he was trying to figure out what he's going to do about it. So when he pulled up to the window where you pay, the first window, he just paid for her food. And he thought, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pay for her food. Then when he pulled up to the second window, he showed them both receipts and took her food with him and left. <laughs> When I read that, he paid for her food. I thought, oh, that's a good Christian. Boy, wow, look at that. He's, he's just loving his enemies. Then he took her food. Can you imagine how mad she was? Oh, God bless the little McDonald's worker, though, that had to face her. She has already wound up, and that really helped me. I wish I would have read that before this week and all the driving, and I might could have used it. So that was a blessing. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for your love for us. Thank you for taking care of us, being good to us, for the many blessings, for the praise reports we were able to share tonight. We thank you, Lord, for helping those that are sick and struggling, how you've touched some of them and given victories even in the last few days. We pray continue to bless them. Lord, help Miss Kay's family and the great battles they're facing on both sides, her mom and her dad. We pray for Brother Chris Yarbrough that he get to come home and be able to uh, finally be there with his wife and get to feeling better and strengthen him. Miss Pauletta, we ask you to get that infection out of her body. Give the doctors wisdom there and let her be able to come home as well. Lord, we pray for Brother Travis and Miss Katie. Would you help her and let it not be anything that requires surgery? Surgery, Lord, touch her and strengthen her. Just supernaturally heal, heal her, Lord. We know you can. We pray that you would. And uh, Father, we pray for Brother Brian as he's off preaching tonight that you'd use him in a special way. And I do ask you to bless this service as Brother Nick already prayed, Lord, that you would meet with us, speak to us. Use Brother Matt tonight, Lord. I'm excited about the topic tonight. I believe that you want to challenge us, and I pray that you'd do just that. Bless the offering. Multiply it, Lord, for your good and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, kids, go ahead. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. All right, Brother Dave, y'all ready? Let's have the adult choir come sing. I appreciate them practicing today. Let's come sing.
write that line, and because of all it has done in me. Amen. Hey, you wouldn't be saved if it wasn't for the Bible, the preaching of the Word of God. And we'd be out living like the devil if somebody hadn't taken the Bible and preached to us. Hey, that you ought not do all that. The Word of God is what's changed our lives. Bless His holy name. Listen, my children are saved. My children are trying to live for God. All of it's because God gave us a book and God gave us some men down through time and some ladies that would speak it and teach it and preach it. And it has changed our lives. Bless His holy name. The skeptic, they don't understand, but we ought to rejoice that God has given us a book. I want them to sing some more of that. It stirs my heart. I'm thankful for what the Bible has done in my life. Hey, for the times that I have needed direction, and I opened it up, and God made it a lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. Times that I needed correction, and I opened it up, and the Word of God pierced my heart. Hey, the times that I needed comfort, and I would read the stories of how God never failed throughout the pages of this book, and He would say, to me I love you like I love them I'm the same yesterday and today and forever I'm no respecter of persons hey all them promises were given to us in this book bless his holy name for the Bible sing some more of that Let's stand while they're coming down. And youth choir, you make your way up once they get down. Have the youth choir make your way up. Let them get down, and then you come right on up all in the same song. Move around and shake hands with somebody. Be seated while the youth choir is coming.
Let me give you just a couple of announcements. That means I need you to focus, all right? While they're getting in place, focus on these announcements. The Senior Saints are having a trip coming up on August the 20th. There's a singing up at Trinity Baptist Church. It's $20. If you're interested in going to the singing with the Senior Saints, come and see Miss Kelly after the service. Talk to her about that. And then Teen Camp 2, not this weekend. Where do you go? Brother Jason, next weekend, right? Teen Camp 2. wants you to be praying about that. If you have young people that ought to be in it, it's kind of a back to school. One more shot in the arm spiritually for our young people. Basically, just our church goes out there. And uh, we go out and preach to them two or three times in those couple of days. And so if uh, you'd be praying about that, that would be a blessing. And I'm sure, do you have all you need in the, in the form of boats and watercraft and all that? And if you've got one of those things and want to be a blessing, come speak to Brother Jason. If you've got one of those things, just want to hoard it up all for yourself and think God only gave it to you for only you, then you just sit there and hold on to it, and that'll be good. New Man of Christian School orientation, Friday night, 7 o'clock. Is that right, Mr. Stiles? 7 o'clock, our 25th year. This is our 25th year. Say amen right there. I'm telling you, God has been good to us, and our enrollment is as big as it's been in many, many, many years. Probably, I'd say 12 or 13 or 15 years, maybe. So we thank the Lord for that, but we need prayer. We want God's hand in the place and on the place. And so if you would, please be praying about that orientation Friday night. The teachers will come in a couple of days before that, and we'll do some teacher orientation with them. So pray the Lord will stir the hearts of our staff and Mr. Wagner, and uh, that he would just give us a great year in this 25th year. And then we'll give you one more announcement, and the youth choir will come. Growth visitation coming up August the 29th. So you got a couple of weeks to get ready for it. That is, that's a Thursday night, ain't it, Brother Matt? That's a Thursday night, and so go ahead and look at the calendar and make arrangements, rearrange something if you have to. We only do it normally once a month, once every six weeks. Growth visitation on Thursday, August the 29th, where we can go out and tell some folks about Jesus, all right? Let's worship a little bit while the young people sing. come down on a cross and die for us and save us is just one of the biggest miracles that you could ever imagine and you know he's just been so good to me I don't deserve anything that he's ever given me in the mess of this old world sometimes I need a word from heaven that everything's okay I try to walk by faith but sometimes I'm so afraid and I cannot see how God could make a way but then I think he's never failed me never left me not one time if I cried out and my voice he has not heard never fail me he won't start today he will make a way he's never failed me as broken as you Oh, your troubles, they are real. And I know you think that God's 
forsaken you but child don't lose your faith he's working while you wait so just hold on Troubles, they are real, and I know you think that God's forsaken you. But child, don't lose your faith, He's working while you wait. So just hold on. for being so good to me and for giving me such a good family and for giving me good people to look up to and for giving me the privilege to be able to go to a Christian school and to be able to stand up here on a normal Sunday night and be able to sing in such a good youth choir. I'm just beyond blessed. I'm so thankful for that. Jesus is my high tower, the light in my dark hour. Without him, I could not see. He is closer than a brother, above him there's no other.
sands. He promised he would hold my hand, that I would never walk alone. He said he'd go with me always, through good times and through dark days. He'd be my friend, be my God, oh Jesus. He's the best friend in my life. Teenagers, come on down. While they're coming down, let me uh, give you another praise report. I had a, a good night at the RU the other night. I was getting text reports from it. Brother Dwayne Tinsley, I think, came up and shared his testimony and was used of the Lord in that service. And we want to praise the Lord for that, for how God's working in Brother Dwayne's life and giving him victory and then using him to be a blessing in others' lives. That's good, Miss Scott, right there. Right? That's good. All right, now listen, Brother Matt's going to come preach us. I asked Brother Matt, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, I heard him preach to our singles. And in the middle of that message, he just told an illustration. He just told a story about himself um, running through the Greenway, and he'll tell it tonight, and uh, being able to witness to some folks. And in my heart, I was impressed to ask him not to preach the same message, but I said, Brother Matt, you, you almost always preach Sunday morning when I'm gone. If I'm gone on a Sunday morning, I said, but can you preach both services? He said, yeah, he got a good taste of it this weekend. He preached Friday night in Georgia, drove home Saturday, preached twice a day. And I thought, yeah, glory right there. Yeah, get you some of that. And uh, he's going to preach tonight a very challenging message. I guarantee it will be a challenge to me as well. I really believe, everybody look at me, I really believe our church needs to hear this message tonight. And so I want you to listen on purpose. I don't want you to be like, yeah, I'm here and it's already good in this. Where's Tyler at? Tyler, if you say anything about 706 when that gets here, we're going to have them storm the computer and throw you out. And so I want you to focus and listen. I believe that we need this message and what the Lord's laid on his heart. I had heard a statistic in one of the meetings I'd just been in. It was in the summit, and I had heard a statistic that stuck in my heart, and I wrote it down. And then after I heard Brother Matt's story, I shared the statistic. I think he's going to use it tonight as well. And I said, Brother Matt, I want you to preach on Sunday night along these lines. And so he's going to come. He's going to preach from his heart. You listen. To us. Oh, turn it off. Sorry, Mark. Amen, brother. Well, praise the Lord. If you're glad you're saved tonight, say amen. amen. Appreciate the adult choir and the youth choir. Man, what a blessing it is to have such a good church. And I count it an honor tonight to, uh, man, to preach to our church. And I'm, I will say this, I'm thankful for a lot of things. And one of those is that I don't preach twice on Sunday every week. Praise the Lord for that. It makes you appreciate... Uh, uh, your pastor, and uh, you don't have to preach twice on Sunday to appreciate that, but uh, it's give me a fresh perspective, but uh, I do thank, I thank Lord for our preacher and his family, glad they got to be on vacation, and we're thankful for all God's doing in this church, and by the way, these are exciting days for the church, aren't they, and uh, man, the Lord's at work, the Holy Spirit has not uh, left us, 
And uh, there are still people that need to get saved, still lives that need to be changed. And I hope that you're excited about uh, what God has left us here to do. I mean, we're not just, uh, we're not just here hanging out to the rapture. Uh, you know, we're supposed to be storming the gates and occupying uh, till he comes. And so I hope that you're excited about that. And um, I tell you what, as I thought about it tonight, I thought I may be a little nervous preaching while the preacher's here. I don't know. It reminded me, uh, as I thought about that, of a, of a guy riding in the back of a taxi. And uh, Des just Des riding along through the highway. And the guy just reached up and tapped the back of his taxi driver and said, Hey, buddy, turn here. And the guy screamed as soon as he did. I mean, just, ah! Screamed and jerked it hard, run it off the road into the ditch. I mean, just <laughs> right in the middle of the ditch. Nobody said nothing for just, I mean, 10 seconds. And he said, man, I'm so sorry. He said, you scared me to death. And the guy said, well, he said, I didn't think tapping you on the shoulder saying, hey, man, turn here was really going to mess with you. The guy said, man, it's not your fault. He said, it's my fault, to be honest with you. He said, this is my first day on the job driving a taxi. He said, but I'm going to be honest with you. He said, I drove a hearse for 20 years. <laughs> he said, nobody ever talked to me out of the back. So, amen. I'm a little nervous tonight. So somebody taps you on the shoulder, I may have a stroke up here, all right? Unless it's the Holy Ghost. And so, uh, praise the Lord for that. I did get a text to, uh, today after the service. I had mentioned the hot sauce that Miss Patty gave me. And uh, just joking with you about that. And uh, somebody texted me and said, uh, if you take a notion, you want some real hot sauce. So I don't know if that was attacking the hot sauce I had up here. I'm not going to start a hot sauce war. But uh, Miss <laughs> is a lady in our church. She said uh, her son makes one using Carolina Reapers. I don't know what that is, but it sounds really hot. I don't want one of them. So we got 14 Reaper plants, two white ghosts. And uh, by the way, anything that's got white ghost or anything with the, word, with the word ghost in it, I don't want any of it. Four regular ghost pepper plants said he can hook you up or burn your taste buds out. I was like, no thanks. Amen. <laughs> so uh, not me. I'll just be buying my mild salsa and uh, enjoying my taste buds for the rest of my life. So I didn't try the other, by the way. It's still at the house. And so we'll, we'll see what happens tonight. Proverbs 31. If you have your Bibles, let's go there quickly. And... Um, I know that uh, you're not concerned about the time, but my dad is. And so he texts me, and we need to be done by 7.15. He's always an encouragement. I just want to say that. Always there to be a help in a time of need for me. <laughs> Proverbs 31, as you're finding your place there, I want you to find Luke chapter 10 as well. Hold your place in Luke chapter 10. We'll, we'll be there in just a few minutes. And um, we'll read Proverbs 31 to start with. I want to share my heart with you tonight. And um, Brother Tony talked to me earlier in the week, and the Lord just began to stir my heart about this thought. And I want to tell you this, I'm personally challenged by the message tonight to not just preach it, but to apply it to my life. You know, sometimes we'll hear something, and, or maybe even as teachers and preachers, sometimes we'll try and uh, proclaim something, and we want to do a good job at that. But we need to be more concerned with how we're living. Uh, than, to be honest with you, I'm more concerned with living this than I am presenting it to you tonight, okay? And I hope that you'll leave church with a uh, renewed desire to want to put into application what you hear preached. Sometimes you hear things preached and you think, man, that's, a, that's an interesting message, but I'm not sure how to apply that. You'll have no uh, doubt tonight when you leave here about the application of the message. I believe it will be very, uh, very clear. And so I want to encourage you with this thought tonight. Proverbs 31, and then I want to read from verse number 20. This is the passage of scripture we often refer to as uh, the virtuous woman. And it's got some wonderful truths in it. But I, I want to notice, I want you to notice something that sort of uh, stood out to me some time back, and I made a note in my Bible, and when we talked about uh, this, this tonight's message, uh, this verse came back to my heart. Notice what it says. The Bible says, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, I thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you tonight, Lord, that you've never failed us. Lord, not one time. Joshua said not one word of your promise has ever failed. I'm thankful, Lord, it was true for Joshua's day and it's true for our day, Lord. The Bible says all thy commandments are faithful there in Psalms 119. Praise you, Lord, tonight for the word of God. The promises that you give us. Thank you for the promise of your presence. 
We ask you tonight that you'd give it in this service. I pray that you'd quicken the hearts and the ears of the hearers. Lord, I know some people are tired, but to, I pray tonight, Lord, we would not check out of this service. I pray we'd check in tonight, Lord, and be in tune with what the Spirit of God would uh, have, uh, have us hear and, Lord, then have us do with the message. I'm nothing. Lord, I need you tonight. I mean that. pray that you must increase. I must decrease. I'm ever more aware of my deficiencies as a preacher and as a Christian. And I, Lord, fully depend upon you tonight. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Use me to be a blessing and to help our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Proverbs 31, the Bible says she, I want you to say that word there. The Bible says she, what's the word? Stretcheth out her hand to the poor. And the Bible says, yea, she, what's the next word? Reacheth forth her hands to the needy. It appears that the heart of this virtuous woman is set on stretching herself to reach out to those that are in need. She has something, listen to me tonight, she has something to give them that they're lacking and she's not running from the responsibility to reach them. I'm both challenged and convicted by the example of this virtuous woman tonight and the question that I hope that should provoke you from this passage, the Bible says she stretcheth out her hand and she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. I want to preach to you on this question tonight and that is this, who are you reaching. Who are you reaching? The Bible says she stretcheth and then she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Tonight, if you were to liken yourself, and I thought about this for the church, and Brother Steve, we heard some of this uh, just mentioned briefly in your uh, marriage uh, retreat there, but if you were to liken yourself to an inanimate object in the church, I wonder tonight which one of these two that you'd be. I've got a straw and I've got a funnel. And you know what, tonight each of these represent uh, two types of people in the room. And um, you say, well, what is that, Brother Matt? Well, uh, first of all, a straw is a means by which to consume something. This is a consumer. You put it in something and it consumes and takes out of it. But a funnel is something by which to contribute. Tonight, let me ask you a question. Are you a consumer in the church or are you a contributor in the church? Because see what some people do is they'll walk in God's house and they'll put their straw in and try and get everything that God's got for them in church. But you know what God's looking for? God's looking for some people that will pour into the church. God's looking for some people that will contribute to the work of God. Does that make sense to you tonight? I wonder which one we are. By the grace of God, I don't want to be one that always takes from the church. I want to be one that contributes and gives to the work of God. If you'll bring up that stat, when me and Brother Tony were talking, uh, he was there at the summit. He said, Brother Clark made this statement uh, to the men there, and it, it was this, that 70% of people come to church because of someone who invited them and a relationship that they have with that individual. Now, uh, I, want you to, I want you to go to the next slide here. Tom Rayner, he's a church consultant, and he said this, he said 82% of the unchurched are likely to attend if a friend, a coworker, a neighbor, or a family member invites them. I want you to listen to this. He went on to say, perhaps we need to pause and reconsider this. He said it's more than 8 out of 10 of the unchurched said they would come if they just got an invitation from somebody. Now, consider this. The Gallup poll estimates that 43% of Americans, 135 million people, are unchurched. He said if their research is accurate, the implications would be this. More than 110 million people would attend church if somebody would just invite. Them. If somebody would just reach out to them, they'd come to church. They'd be here. Tonight I'm preaching on who are you reaching. I want, I want you to think about that. By the way, let me just get real personal tonight about our church. In the month of July, you can switch the slide tile if you want to. In the month of July, I started looking through all the visitor cards that come in the plate on Sunday morning. And in the month of July, we had 29 visitors come to our church. We didn't have any last week, had three today. That's a total of 32 visitors that have visited New Mount of Baptist Church in the last six weeks. 32 in the last six weeks. We have them identify certain things on that visitor card as to why they came. Listen to these. Three came just because they hadn't been here in a long time. They just showed up randomly. One came because he found us online. But 28 came 
28 of the 32 came because somebody personally invited them to be here. Let me ask you tonight, who are you reaching out to? You say, everybody goes to, no, don't use that word. Everybody don't go to church. We live in the hub of a lot of churches, but everybody don't go. Sometimes we convince ourselves that, well, you know, somebody's going to get them because there's all these churches. You know what the problem with that is? If every church has that mentality, then nobody gets them. Nobody gets them. And tonight, I want to challenge you on this thought. Who are you reaching? Isn't that incredible? And of all the, God, all the people that God's brought here, by the way, the three that came today, i seen those visitor cards. I reached out to the two folks in the church that invited them. They were here today because of somebody's invitation. I wonder tonight, who might be sitting in these pews in the weeks and months to come because you personally reach out to that individual? Now, Everest is a passion that many people like to read about and like to study. And in 1996, uh, they, had, they had an expedition group go. It was one of the deadliest times there on Everest. There's a guy by the name of Anatoly Bukharev that went there and, with these groups. And he actually was able to summit Mount Everest without oxygen. Now... You say, okay, big deal. Well, if you study that, there's a certain death zone that you get to, and you begin to think, your mind begins to do crazy things. By the way, how many of you feel like, I don't have to be on Everest for my mind to do crazy things? Yeah, come on now. Can I get a witness tonight on that? I'm down here on the level playing field, and my mind's crazy. I don't need to go to Everest. But they've got a certain place in which you need to be assisted by oxygen to make it. This guy didn't. Bukhari made it all the way to the top and was able to descend safely. But on that day, one of the deadliest days on Everest, both of the expeditionary groups that went, their group leaders died, and the people were stranded and stuck on the side of the mountain. Bukharif went back to the Sherpas, which were, uh, you know, the, the, the native people that are there. They pay the Sherpas to take them up and down the mountain, and he pleaded with them. He said, please, I need your help to go back out and retrieve these people that are stranded on the mountain. But they said, we were paid for one trip, and we won't go back. So he took his gear after already summiting Everest and he went back out and he began to try and find those that were stranded and bring them back to camp. You know what the story says? That only one walked in on their own. Everybody else died on the mountain except for the ones that Bukhari went out and he reached himself. Can I tell you something tonight? Most of them are just going to die out there unless somebody goes to tell them. Unless somebody goes to reach them. Hey, they're going to die out there in a place where it's Bible prevalent. People are going to die and go to hell unless somebody opens their mouth and reaches out. Who are you reaching out to tonight? I wonder. Now, I want to do something here real quick. I need Cooper. I need Brother Aaron Krause. I need Brother Chad Worley to come on up here tonight for just a few minutes and really just for a brief few minutes. I want you to consider the church as a fire department. Now, uh, I never was a volunteer firefighter. I never was cool enough, I don't guess. Brother Chad actually is, and he was, uh, I think he was the volunteer of the year, or something like firefighter of uh, the year for Nebo. So that's pretty awesome, brother. I mean, for what a small guy that he is. But anyways, now, um, so here's what I want to do tonight. In a fire department, there's a number of varying responsibilities that have to happen. So tonight, i tell you what we're going to do, Brother Chad. That's yours, so we're going to let you go ahead and put that on, brother. There you go. You look real good in that thing right there. And I'm kind of embarrassed to not have you that bag. Is It's fine. I got it. But uh, <laughs> step on over here, brother, if you would. Kind of out of the way there. All right, so tonight you're going to be the gear guy, okay? You're the gear guy. And so, um, and so your responsibility, you got a couple things, all right? His responsibilities are going to be the following. He's got to prep the turnout gear. Have the helmets functional with all their accessories, gloves, radio, boots, self-contained breathing apparatus available if necessary. You've got to have all the gear ready to go at a moment's notice. All right, you good with that? You got it all in there? All right, now, so we got the gear guy in the fire department. They're very important people. Would you agree with that? All right, even if, even if you don't know, they're important. Now, this may apply only to bigger fire departments, but then we've got to have a food guy. That's you, Krause. Amen. Go ahead and put your hat on right there. And uh, Amen. Tell you what, man, we got a bunch of firefighters that uh, are hungry, and bless God, there you go, right there. And so, you know what? These people can't go hungry. They got to have food. They got to have sustenance. 
And uh, so, yeah, don't hurt each other with that. So your job, or your, your, your particular responsibility is going to be, uh, man, to make sure that nobody goes hungry. I want to make sure we have three square meals a day for the department, everybody in there. And you make sure that everybody's satisfied. you got to be a good cook. Can you handle that? All right, now, we got one more over here, and you're going to be the truck guy, okay? So he's uh, kind of a young guy. You don't have a whole lot there. You just kind of put the hat on backwards. There you go. And uh, here you go. Put your hand in that glove right there. Let you work through that. All right, man. Turn it the other way. That's, uh, <laughs> can I get another volunteer up here tonight? But, okay, the truck guy. Now, it's going to be your job to make sure. All right, here we go. It's going to be your job to make sure the truck's gas and ready at a moment's notice. And also, here's something else I want to make sure. I want to make, tr- make sure the truck is so clean. I want to be able to see my reflection in it, all right? So I, mean, I want you to work hard at that. Now, so we got the gear guy over here. He's got all the stuff, all the accessories, and then we've got the food guy here, and he's going to make sure his responsibility is to prep and have all the food ready to go. And then we got the truck guy, so we've got everybody's got different things that they're doing. And so just to make sure everybody knows what their job is, let's go through and ask them. Are you ready? Here we go. All right, you tell me. What's your job? Uh, clean truck and make sure it's ready to go. No, no, no. What's your job? All right, let me ask you, what's your job? I'm the food guy. Okay, let me ask you, what's your job? The gear guy. Okay, nobody knows what their job is. Let me ask you again, what is your job? Clean the truck and make sure it's ready. What's your job? I cook food. I'm the dude. I have everything ready. That's their responsibility. You know what their job is? Tell me what your job is. Fight the fires. Fight the fires. What's your job? The guys that fight the fires. Right. Yep. What's your job? Sure fight ready. the fires. Yep. That's the right answer. Look, can I tell you something tonight? All these guys up here have different responsibilities. He's got certain roles he plays. He's got certain roles he plays. He's got certain roles he plays. But none of them matter because their main job is this: put out the fires that get started. That's their job. These things are responsibilities that help them do their job, but it ain't their job. Their job is fight fires. And tonight, we've got all kinds of things going on in this church. we got people that drive the bus, people that make the food, people that teach a Sunday school class, all these things. That's your responsibility. But your job is to make sure to try and do everything you can to keep people out of hell. That's your job tonight, to reach the lost and keep them from going to hell. That's your job. You say, well, I just think my responsibility is more. No, your responsibility is not as important as your job is tonight. Don't you forget what your job is. To reach the lost. You guys got it? All right, y'all can sit down. Just take the stuff with you. I'll get it after church. Praise the Lord. Y'all give them a hand. Appreciate the firefighters. Praise the Lord. Even if they don't know what they're doing. Your job tonight, and it's to fight the fire, is to reach people. Let me ask you this question. Go to the next slide. Who you reaching? Who you reaching? Go to Luke 10. I'll be done in just a minute. Go to Luke 10. Who you reaching? Who you reaching tonight? Luke 10, one of the most familiar stories in all the Bible is the story of what most people call the Good Samaritan. Look, if you will, Luke 10, verse 30. If you're there, say amen. All right, look at it. Now, the Bible says in Jesus, verse 30, answering and said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, leaving him half dead, and by chance there came down a certain priest that way. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, when uh, a Levite was there at that place, he came and he looked on him and he passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. He went to him, bound up his wounds, poured in oil, wine, set him on his own beast, brought him to an inn, took care of him. And then the Bible says this, on the morrow when he departed, he he took out two pence, gave them to the host, said, take care of him. And when I come again, I will repay thee. Who you reaching tonight? Who you reaching? Everybody mentioned in this story saw somebody that had a need. Can I say that again? Look here, right? Everybody in this story saw somebody that had a need. Everybody mentioned saw somebody that had a need. But guess who reached out? Only one did. Only one did. Everybody was looking at what should have been done, but only one made an effort. This traveler had been wounded. He had been robbed. He had been abandoned. And yet nobody was reaching out to him. Let me ask you tonight, who, are, who do you know that's wounded tonight? Who do you know that's weary? Who do you know that, uh, listen, the world's got a hold of? Who do you know that just don't go to church tonight? Who do you know that uh, may have been hurt by different circumstances? 
Let me ask you, are you making any effort to reach out? You know what's sad about this story? The people who should have been reaching out didn't reach out. The Levite and the priest, God help us, the religious community failed this guy. I mean, he's laying there in the ditch. And the Bible says he's half dead. And the religious people just walk on. You know why? Because they sure as the world don't want to get involved in a problem that's not their own. I got enough problems of my own. We, I mean, we, we got enough stuff that we're dealing with. I just don't have time to take on somebody else's problem. So we're going to go about our business. And boy, that's what you see. And notice two things tonight, two areas in this passage I want you to get a hold of. And then we'll close. First of all tonight, look at the details in the story. The details in the story. Who you reaching tonight? Hey, look at me. Who are you reaching? Moms? Dads? Teenagers? Oh, well, you know, hey, kids? Youth Sports League? Hey, who are you reaching tonight? Well, I'm just too busy. Well, you know what? Hey, look right up here. We need to get focused. The details in this story. Notice some factors in this story. Can I help you? Letter A tonight. Notice some critical details I want to point out. Number one, the convenience factor. The convenience factor. The Bible says, and by chance, there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Could I just, could I just offer some pure speculation tonight on this? I want to speculate that this priest may have seen him, may have looked on him and recognized there's a problem that needs to be dealt with, but it don't, it don't belong to me, and I'm not looking to be inconvenienced. By the way, I'm never looking to be inconvenienced. Never, ever, I promise, all right? I've got a heart of gold, maybe, but uh, I, I never want to be inconvenienced. And this guy, I believe, looked at this problem, and a guy lay there half dead, and he thought, eh, I just don't know if I have... Time to deal with this. Brother Tony's talking about traffic. You know, I was on my way to preach it in Atlanta, or had to go through Atlanta on Friday night, and I got stuck in traffic. And can I tell you, I was, I was filled with the Spirit. It wasn't the right one, but I was filled with the Spirit. Amen. Of the Antichrist, I believe. I was, um, can I say this? I was inconvenienced. <laughs> I was inconvenienced. It, it wasn't fun. You know, Brother Tony mentioned a few minutes ago about... Um, the story that I give to the singles retreat, I guess it was about a week ago, Thursday, I'd went out and run one afternoon. And I was really convicted about the, the fact, Brother Jody, that, man, I hadn't, won, I hadn't won anybody the Lord in a while and just kind of beat up about that. And Dawson, you preached about that Wednesday night. And so I thought, Lord, I, I really want to I really want to talk to somebody. And as I was running, I was listening uh, to some, I was listening to some preaching. And as I got out through there, the Lord set up a divine appointment. And if you've ever been to the Greenway, I run out there. And, and as I went to run the loop, there's a couple sitting on the picnic table, just sitting there and talking to each other. I run by them, didn't think anything about it. I went around the loop, come back. They were still sitting there. And I just kind of looked at them, and the, the Lord just kind of nudged me. And then I went on back a little bit further, turn around, and come back, and they were still there. And it's like the Holy Spirit said, are you just going to run by them again? Or are you going to stop and say something? At this point, I was three miles into the run, I mean, and just absolutely about to die, sweating like a hog. I mean, seriously. And so, you know, I just kind of stopped. I walked over to where they were. She had her phone. He was sitting there at the table just looking at her. I took my earbuds off and I said, hey. I said, um, I said my name's Matt. And I said, I'm an assistant pastor here in town. And uh, I said, I, I just wanted to ask you this question. I said, I just wanted, do y'all go to church anywhere? And uh, but neither, one of them, neither one of them did. And I mean, I, again, I just sitting there wiping sweat. And I said, guys, I, I don't normally stop and talk. I just felt compelled to, uh, to say something to you. And while I was talking to him, I noticed something. <laughs> I noticed that that guy sitting on that table, people had been walking around the greenway leaving tracks in the bathrooms and leaving tracks in different places. And I noticed that guy sitting on that table had a twisted up gospel track in his hand. Brother Bruce just sitting at that table. I run by him once, twice. Holy Ghost said, you ever going to stop? You've been saying you want to reach somebody. There's one right there. And I started talking to him. And I, boy, I seen that track. And I mean, really about got emotional just looking at it. And I, I said, can I ask you all a question? I said, if you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? And the guy said, yes, I do. He said, I've been saved. And sort of give me his testimony. And I looked at the woman sitting beside him. She was about 21 years old. I asked her, I said, uh, I said her name. I said, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? She said, no, I don't. I said, could I take a 
a minute here and just tell you how you could know for sure that heaven's your home. You could be saved. She said, you sure can. And right there in the middle of the greenway, I mean, I just soaking wet, disgusting, probably smelled horrible. I just give her the gospel. Man, the Lord broke my heart for her as we was talking. And right on that picnic table, she bowed her head and invited the Lord Jesus Christ to be her Savior. I mean, man, what a glorious thing it was. And I wanted to communicate with them. I said, can I get a phone number from one of you? And she gave me hers. And, and I said, I'm going to text you just so you know whose number this is. And so I just sent her a text with my name and the church here. 45 minutes later, I was off doing something else, and I got a reply back from her. And the text said this. It said, thank you for everything today, comma, I can't believe that I got saved. I thought, Lord, thank you for that. You know what? Nine times out of ten, it would have been an inconvenience for me to stop in the middle of what I was doing, by the way, to help myself. I wasn't out there to make the world a better place. I was out there because I can't fit in my stinking clothes anymore. That's the problem. And so I'm running to help perfect this flesh. And the Holy Ghost said, hey, won't you stop and, and get, just give a witness here. The problem sometimes is the convenience factor. We just ain't got time to do it. Well, and then there's another factor. Let me give you this. You say, I thought you was going to be done in a minute. In a minute, that's a relative statement. In a minute. The comfort factor. How about this? The Levite passed by on the other side. And so did the priest. And oftentimes... And can I just be very, very transparent with you? Oftentimes, because something's out of our comfort zone, we just pass by on the other side. Can I ask you this question? Since when are we only supposed to serve in the capacity of our comfort? Can I ask that again? Since when did the Bible say serve if it is in the capacity of your comfort zone? Scripture don't say that. But you know, sometimes we think, well, I'm just so what, uncomfortable. I know that's the case. But tonight, if we want to see God work in this church and the Lord bring, listen, uh, the Lord bring the harvest in, we're going to have to do some things that's a little bit uncomfortable. You say, I don't know if I, I promise you could, but this comfort factor often keeps people from reaching those that are in need. A great quote I have on my desk. I've referenced it many times. Look at it every day when I go to my office. It says this, nothing great ever came from a comfort zone. I try and remind myself of that every day. Thirdly, look at this tonight. Notice the curiosity factor. The Bible says that the Levite, I believe it was, that he came and he, and he looked on him. Now, the one saw him and he passed by, but the one came and he, he looked on him. You know, sometimes we are curious about the needs of people, but not compelled to do anything about it. Come on now. Hey, are you listening tonight? Sometimes we'll look and think, oh, I wonder what's going on with so-and-so. We'll, so we'll scour their social media feed and think, I wonder what's going on, you know, and look and send out some messages. Hey, you know anything about so-and-so? You're just curious. You're not compelled to do anything about it. You just want to know so you can talk to somebody else. Can I just be honest? You say, thank God the preacher's back. Yeah, he's preaching next week, so I'm going to join and just give it to you tonight. So buckle in and listen. Curiosity. Sometimes we just want to know for the sake of knowing. Mike, I, I don't know how many years ago it's been, but somebody bought us courtside seats to go watch the Hornets play. You say, you like the Hornets? Not really, but when you get courtside seats, you go. You know, <laughs> I'm a Hornets fan tonight. And so he's excited about going. Uh, we got to be there on our way. On our way, we was driving. And as we did, we was traveling, and sometimes when tragic things happen, you remember very specific details. We was going 70 miles an hour. Just remember my speedometer saying that. 70 miles an hour, traffic was pretty heavy. And up above, up ahead of us was a piece of recap in the middle of the road. You know, trucks lose them all the time. And apparently the guy in front of us was not paying attention. We were about 20 yards, 30 yards behind him. And then he looked up and he noticed that recap in the road. And when he did, he jerked it. I mean, swerved hard. And by the way, when you're going 70 miles an hour and you jerk the steering wheel hard, the end result thereof is typically the ways of death, okay? <laughs> to quote Proverbs, it's not good. The end thereof are the ways of death. And he swerved that thing over. And I watched the car just go, kind of turn that way. And then he overcorrected. And then we overcorrected the car, come back this way. And what happened next I mean, change Micah's life. He was several years younger at that point, and he's in the, you know, he's just in the, the, the passenger seat, just kind of like, hey, Dad, and ready for the game. And so he's sitting there watching. All of a sudden, this car swerves this way, swerves this way, and then it just turns over and starts 
rolling down the road. Just, and we're sitting there watching. I'm thinking, if this car goes this way, we're all dead. And Micah's going, watching out the window. I'm just like, oh, Lord. I'm confessing sins. I'm thinking, I believe in eternal security. But, Lord, just in case, God forgive me for all my sin. I'm watching this car flip seven times. And then it bounces one last time and up on the side of the, the highway there and lays out flat. Man, traffic just comes to a halt. I'm thinking, you know what? I said, I said son, I think we just watched somebody die. Dad? I said, I think he's dead. Said, There's no way you can live through that. I thought, so what do you do? Well, you call 911, right? And so I called 911. I was very, very uh, concerned about this guy. And I sort of looked at him and I thought, he's probably dead. You know, Brother Brian, I thought he's probably dead. And if I go out there to his car, it's going to explode and it's going to kill me. And Micah is going to be fatherless. So I was, I was working through this thing. There. So I called 911 and did the Christian thing. And then I looked at my two courtside tickets sitting on the dash. And I thought, well, I took some gospel tracks, threw them out the window, and we got back on the road. <laughs> and I'm not kidding, except for the, about the gospel tracks, but I'm not kidding. We didn't stop. And I, I felt really, really bad about that. Um, Later on, I really did. The Holy Spirit convicted me. He's like, hey, good job. Just left that guy out there for dead, you know. By the way, if that was you, <laughs> um, I'm really sorry. I did call a first responder and find out that the guy, the jaws of life came and cut him out, and he lived. Hey. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? So I made the right decision. But um, <laughs> the truth is, I was curious about what happened, but not enough to do anything. Tonight... Let me give you the heart of it, and I'm done. At 723, the compassion factor. This, this is the last part of the message. I said the details in the story. Now, go to, go to this next one, Brother Tyler. Notice this. Notice the difference in the story. The difference. What made the difference in this story? The Bible says in verse 34 of, uh, of the passage, or verse 33 of the passage, but a certain Samaritan. Say that with me, but a, say it with me, certain Samaritan. Talk to me, the Bible said a certain Samaritan. It didn't say anybody special, it said he was a certain Samaritan. Nobody, listen, uh, name in the, the marquee, just a, a, a no name here, but he made a difference in this traveler. You say, why? Because he reached out. He reached out. He was the difference in this story. You say, what made the difference? Two things. Notice number one. Notice his involvement. His involvement made a difference. Tonight, I'm talking to you about who you're reaching. Who you're reaching. His involvement. First of all, let me say this. His involvement was personal. He didn't call and say, hey, tell you what. Bobby, uh, would you come down here and help this guy in the ditch? You know what he did? He got off his own donkey and he got down in the mess and rolled his, listen, rolled his pants legs up, and he got in the thing himself. He, it was personal to him. Sometimes we see a problem, and we want to call somebody else. How about you get involved in that individual's life? Can I just say this? Thank you. <laughs> Brother Justin ain't the only person that can reach people that have addiction problems. You can reach out. Well, they got addictions. I, well, I should call Justin and see if he can't reach out to them. Well, why don't you do one better? Why don't you just reach out to them? Right. You've got the same God inside of you that he does. And he knows a little bit more about that than we do. But I'm just saying sometimes we just want to delegate that process to somebody else. We're really good at delegating stuff we don't want to do. Right. Well, brother, I'm just real busy today. Baloney. You're not busy? That's a lie. Oh, I'm just, I hate hearing people tell me how busy. Well, we're just so busy. I'm thinking the whole world's busy, Captain. You know, we're all busy. Stop making excuses for why you can't reach out and get involved. His involvement was personal. His involvement was passionate. You know, this, this is a little gruesome. I apologize for the picture. I took it on my way to church tonight, but uh, I didn't stop helping him either. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, son, I had to preach tonight. I got to get here and preach. But you're dead and make a good sermon illustration. But you think about this guy that's half dead. He ain't laying down there, you know. I mean, he ain't laying down there in his best robe. I mean, he ain't got a Gucci robe on in the ditch down there. Be like, man, will somebody come by and give me something to drink? No, he's half dead. He stinks. He's bleeding. I mean, like putrefying down here in the ditch. And you know what happened? The Bible says that he got off his own beast and he come down there and he began to bind up. He cleaned him and he carried him. I mean, he got down there and it, you know what happened? This guy got down and got involved in the traveler's mess. Sometimes, hey, sometimes to help people, you got to get involved in their mess. 
I mean, and that ain't easy. It ain't easy to, to bind up the wounds. And to. And by the way, he sent him on his own beast and carried this guy. Did, did, it, it ever, did it ever dawn on you that the good Samaritan was going somewhere? He wasn't out looking for people that are half dead. We well, hope I find a half dead guy today. I'm so excited. Where's all the half dead people? No. He had somewhere he was going. You know, he'd have a neon sign saying looking for dead people. No. I see dead people. <laughs> but uh, sorry. But you know, the truth is he had somewhere to be, but the Bible tells us that he got involved. He got involved in his mess. He was passionate. His personal. Hey, it was a patient involvement. The Bible says he brought him to an end and it took care of him. Do you know that's more than a five minute conversation? Hey, hey, he took care of him. He was patient with this guy. He didn't walk down and say, here's a track, here's a discipleship book, here's the address, God bless you, hope to see you in church Sunday. No, the Bible says he took care of him. You know, sometimes it takes more time with others than it does with people that maybe grew up in church their whole life. He's patient, patient. His involvement made a difference. How about this tonight? Miss Scott, if you'd come, or Brother Dave, whoever, it don't matter, either one. Let me say something, let me say a word about his investment. Bring this up. The difference tonight was his involvement. The difference tonight was his investment. You say you preach forever. Well, I might as well finish. Look at verse 35. Are you with me? Verse 35, on the morrow when he departed, look what it said. He took out two pence. That's money. It's money. Gave it to the host and said, take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more when I come, I'll repay thee. You say, what about his investment? Hey, look at me. It's costly. It costs him something to help somebody. Well, I just don't know if I have, what, time, money, energy, effort. Say, so, hey, you know what it'll do? In order for you to get involved in somebody's life, it'll cost you something. Some of you that have sit here that are in church tonight, somebody's invested in you. I wonder who it was. Who was it that reached out to you? Did they just call you one time and say, ah, buddy, I, I'm praying for you and ho hope you'll do better. Somebody reached out consistently to you. Hey, they did me. I was a knucklehead, man. But you know what? Somebody kept reaching out and reaching out and reaching out. I wonder tonight, who is it that you need to invest in that might cost you something? Hey, the investment was costly, but don't miss this. The investment was consistent. He said this, when I come again. <laughs> you know what I want to say? Are you kidding me? You've got somewhere to be. But he said this, I brought you here. I spent the night with you. And he told the innkeeper, he said, when I come back, I'll take care of whatever needs he has. He's willing to follow up on a total stranger he didn't even know. I'm convicted tonight. Convicted by this. Joel Logan preached our youth conference in January. When he did, he challenged us. Here's what he said. He challenged us about going after people. And he said, I got a list of people that I reach out to on a regular basis. He said, I keep that list in my pocket. You know what? I thought I need to do that. And so here's what I did. I made a list of 10 people on that day that I thought, God, I want to try and reach them. And for the last several months, once a week, I'll try and pull that card out. And I'll think, Lord, help me to be a blessing to these people. And I'll text them. I'll call them. Sometimes I get no response. Sometimes I get thank you for caring about me. And you know what? I just want to keep reaching out and keep reaching out. I don't want to just try one time and then think, well, he tried once and never come back. I want to follow up on those people. You know why? Because there's somebody that needs to be reached. And if I don't reach them, then I don't know who will. Somebody might. But tonight, here's what I'm telling you. I got people that I'm going after. But let me ask you this. Who are you reaching tonight? If I come up and we put the mic and we just pass the mic around the building and said, all right, who are you going after? Name one person you're trying to reach. Would you have a name? Would you have a name tonight? Or would you just say, well, the whole world, that's not good enough. It needs to be specific. Who do you know tonight? Hey, who's on your radar? Who's on your radar tonight that you need to go after, that you need to reach? And my soul, God has been so good to us at this church. Hadn't he blessed us? I mean, immeasurably more than we ever have deserved in these last couple weeks and months. He's been stirring and working. But you know what? People out there, they need to know. They need to know. 82% of people that have a friend, coworker, or family would come if they just got an invitation.
tonight, you know what really worries me? What really worries me is this, is I pour my heart out to you and then you just leave and say, well, that's a good church service. You know what I hope tonight? I hope tonight that you'll leave and say, God, who would you have me go after? You know what I'd do if I was you? If I didn't have one tonight, I'd get a list. I'd make one. I'd make two, three. You don't have to have 10. Hey, just to start with one. But I wonder, who is it tonight that lives next to you? Do they know you're a Christian? Who is it that works next to you? Do they know tonight who you're reaching? Would you stand tonight all over the church? Bow your heads. I wonder if God spoke to your heart. Preacher, you come. If God spoke to your heart tonight, I wonder would you find a place on this altar and say, Lord, help me to reach those that are in need. But I will say this. It'll it'll cost you some involvement. And there'll have to be an investment, but tonight it's so worth it. Somebody reached you. (laughs) You're here tonight because somebody reached out to where you were. Now, some of you may have grew up in church your whole life. Thank God for that. But some of you here tonight because somebody cared enough to reach out. I wonder who you reaching tonight. Who do you need to get involved in and invest in? Man, I want some people to be here because of me. I want some people's lives and hearts to be touched and lives to be changed because of my investment in them. But it ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to just happen because I pray for them occasionally. It's going to happen because I purposely and intentionally try and go after those individuals tonight who you're reaching. But we're going to have a verse of invitation. Father, I pray you'd bless in the invitation tonight. Lord, help me to put this into application. God, help our church. I pray that you would, Lord, to be better at reaching out pray, God, people wouldn't just sit there waiting on somebody to come. I pray we'd be that one. We'd be the answer to their prayer. Help us, Father, to be faithful, Lord, to get involved and then to invest in the lives of others. I pray tonight you'd bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Brother David. Wonder have I done my best for Jesus who died upon the Sacrifice at Calvary. I know my Lord expects the best from me. How many are the lost that I have lifted? How many are the chained I've helped to free? I wonder, have I done my best for Jesus?